Now, we're just moments away from hearing who will be the next London mayor. It was the lowest turnout since 2012. And there's growing noise that the Conservative candidate, Susan Hall, could be about to spring an almighty upset. Here's her rival, Sadiq Khan, speaking on the campaign trail. We've been both tough on the complex causes of crime, deprivation, alienation, poverty, lack of opportunities, uh, and tough on the, uh, the causes of crime, supporting the police. We've made good progress, so we've invested in record numbers of youth clubs, youth workers, young people, but also the police. And so since 2016, notwithstanding government austerity, notwithstanding our population going up by more than a million, homicides are down, gun crime is down, the number of young people injured with a knife is down, burglary is down. According to the Office for National Statistics, not my figures, the ONS uh, figures, you're less likely to be a victim of violence in London than the rest of the country. You're less likely to be injured as a consequence of violence in London than the rest of the country. Right. Well, Lord Bailey pushed uh, Khan close in the 2012, uh, 2021 rather, mayoral election. And he joins me now, I'm delighted to see. Sean, thank you very much for your company. Pleasure. I want to start off by asking you, do you feel Susan's been let down? Let down by perhaps some with, even within our own party sort of sneered at? Do you think actually the media have done a fair bit of sneering? I know the political class within the Labour Party, they've certainly done it. West Street tweeted, a win for Susan Hall and the Conservatives is a win for racists, white supremacists and Islamophobes the world over. I mean, that kind of rhetoric is just... Deeply alarming, is it not? Look, where to start? Firstly, to address West Street Team's comments, because for me personally, they were really uh, offensive. One of the growing trends in London is the fact that communities are at each other's throats, yeah, and it's comments like that from people at West Street Team that don't help. I was born and raised in London. I'm 52 years old. Racism now is more of an issue between communities than it's ever been, and I believe it's the likes of Wes, who on one end are seen as respectable and knowledgeable, pumping nonsense like this. Very offensive statement. And I'd say to Wes, does he consider me... A a white supremacist, because I don't. Well, you know... I, I really don't consider myself that. No. Right? And I think it's offensive to do that. That's the first thing. I think on a, set, on a sort of more personal level, Susan Hall is a colleague of mine. And yes, she is not your very slick politician. She's never claimed to be. She doesn't want to be. Susan is a woman who listens to people. Susan's a feisty woman. Susan's a woman about family, about safety. And that's what she's been trying to portray through her campaign. She's had so many scenario attacks. People said, if there was a better candidate. Well, I'll tell you something now. As someone who fought to be mayor for three years, a very long campaign, I've looked at what Susan's done, and I tell you right now, she's worked her socks off. And when the media, the mainstream media, treated her very badly, as they do most Tory candidates, she did the very clever thing of switching to a guerrilla campaign. And what I mean by that is she went to the doorsteps. So if she runs to the Khan close now, it's a demonstration of her smart political now, because she started knocking on doors in huge numbers to say to people, that's what they're saying about me, this is what I'm saying about myself, and I think that's been effective. Now, some people would argue she's had a, a gaff-laden campaign. I mean, would you agree with that, those sentiments, or do you think actually she's been pretty decent? What I'd say is actually it's a double standard. If you're a Tory almost anywhere in the country and definitely in London, you are treated differently by the press. That's a fact. And if they pick up all the supposed gaffes she's had, fine, I get it. They have, why have they not done the same to Sadiq Khan? He's had many a gaffe. He's had many things go wrong. And he, he seems to just, you know, he seems to glide across it. I mean, one of my colleagues saying he's Teflon and another colleague interjecting saying, actually, the press are defending him. That's how most of the mainstream press have supported him, really, by not putting out his gaffes in a they may have done Susan's. Do you know, I was really struck by an interview, a debate rather, between the two of them. And uh, uh, S Susan Hall raised the point of saying, you know, there are people walking around the streets of London with machetes, for goodness sake. And Sadiq Khan's reply was a very uh, a sort of sharp and snappy, well, it's not an episode of The Wire. London isn't an episode of The Wire. As if Susan Hall was talking absolute nonsense. But there are people who won't come to London from my part of the world genuinely fearful that London is awash with crime. And they're correct. Let's be very clear. Sadiq Khan's sneering, dismissive <clears throat> tone shows something. He doesn't understand crime. I remember when he first became mayor, tried to become mayor, he ran on a campaign that he'd get rid of um, stop and search, etc., etc. And he did that. He really lowered the figures. But what he did was make sure we had two record years for teenage knife deaths. That's under him. We've had a massive spike in crime. So when Susan says, actually, 
We need to look at what's going on in the street. When I ran in my campaign, I said we need to do much more stop and search. He misunderstood. He was saying stop and search is not effective for boosting arrest numbers. It's not about arrest numbers. It's about presence. It's about showing people if you're nervous and you carry a knife, you'll get caught by the police. If you're out and out villain and you carry a knife, you'll get caught by the police. This reduces the temperature on the street. And the fact that he doesn't know that has cost lives in London. And, and I, that sneering, it, for me, it's so, it's so painful because in the black community in particular, our teenagers have been murdered at such a rate, and it's because we need a mayor who gets on top of that crime. All right. How much, do, just briefly, how much do you think actually Gaza has impacted upon Sadiq Khan's vote? I think very little. In some communities, it is really, really important. But in most communities, it, it isn't a subject that would change their vote. Um, Sadiq Khan talked about it a bit in the beginning, but I think this... This election here is about ULEZ, it's about safety in London, and it's about how much it costs to live in London. That's really what people are voting on. Yeah, I mean, on those points then, the ULEZ 1250 a day for people yeah, who perhaps don't have 1250 a day, to be frank. Mm -hmm. Now, many in other parts of the country are saying this is just a plan to get people out of their cars, you know, part of an overall green agenda. And then, <clears throat> secondly, I mean, building houses, he's promised the land of milk and honey. That hasn't happened. Look, to address those two things, the mayor only hit his housing target because he went back to the government and negotiated downwards twice. The government were very generous to him and lowered the target, and, but he never mentioned that once. Mm. He, all he did was say, well, they've missed their own target. Well, they're a bit tougher on their own target than it was on his. He has failed to deliver housing in London. I, I'll, I'll say one little thing in his favour. It, it is tough. It is tough, but he definitely could have done better. For instance, he keeps asking for more money. He hasn't spent the £4 billion they've given him already. Yeah. So, you know, spend that and then ask for more would be my, would, would what I'd say about that. With the ULEZ, it's simple. Sadiq Khan didn't understand that London isn't an island. London is connected to the whole country, particularly the southeast of the country. And the economy of, of the outer London boroughs relies on that exchange of people and goods. And he disrupted that. And that's why people are so angry. And that's before you get into the disruption is made to families, charities, and just generally moving around in London. And you saw in the Archbishop by-election, it made a material difference. And I think it's one of the big things where it's allowed Susan to get much closer because she was aware of it because she listened. Yeah, I mean, do you think if Boris had stood again in Uxbridge that he would have won that seat on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. He would have won because he's Boris. I want to be very clear. Part of the mess that the Tory party is in now, yeah, was done when we removed Boris. Let's make no mistake, one of the biggest majorities we've had since the Second World War, it was something to do with Boris. If you look at the council election results, they have been pretty bad, to, to say the least. Luckily, Boris was so affected, we started from a high point. So we, we've lost some, and I, my heart goes out to those councils. But he won in 2012, right, with some people saying maybe he wouldn't do it. But in 2012, turnout was low, and with turnouts low today as well, it's lower since 2012. Mm -hmm. And that actually helps the Conservatives, does it not? Look, a lower turnout suggest it would help Susan. But we have to we have to be careful because is that a lower turnout across the board, which basically means stalemate? Is it a lower turnout in a conservative vote? Because people want to send a message before the general election? We don't know. I spoke to members of, of Susan's team and they said, look, we're cautiously optimistic. We we ran our campaign, we hit our goals, we, we are now just seeing what Londoners think. So let's see how that low turnout affects. All right, we'll see Sean, because neither of us unfortunately are Mystic Meg. My that crystal be, ball is I, know. I left it in I left oh, it in my bag. You'll have to Bring it next time. I we will need do. You, we need you. Sean Bailey, thank you very much Great for your time. You.